good evening students. Um, in this present class, I'm going to continue with the same lecture on uh, uh, survey research, survey sampling, and analysis. All this aspect of survey sampling as well as the analysis which would uh, largely fall under quantitative quantitative research. So as we have uh, tried to see uh, what is survey, what is sampling and how we are supposed to use the different set of sampling methods and uh, now our focus will be on uh, what is how to analyze the data, quantitative data which we have collected from the field. First of all, uh, like, before getting into the very idea of uh, uh, how to analyze the data, I would like to unravel, uh, I would like to unfold what is analysis is all about. What analysis is all about. Okay, primarily uh, as we have seen in previous lectures, for instance, uh, we get the raw data. We get the raw data either from the laboratory or from the field. We get the raw data and further we process the data and in the, in the process of processing the uh, data we are uh, trying to come up with a kind of an idea of cleaning in order to reduce the errors and after cleaning the data, we are, our focus will be on two things. One is trying to explore the data. Explore data. At the same time, after exploring it, what is our focus would be is on? Uh, we are trying to produce, uh, for instance, it's an, we would like to do it for modeling, or algorithms. So this is what our, our focus is all about. So at eventually, what is our what is our focus is that we are trying to look at the causal relations. Or the causation. So what is this focus is that, as we have seen, this is part of the explanation. So now the question is, what is the connection between the explanation and the analysis? How analysis and explanations are interlinked to each other? What is What is the connection and how these or how both these are both these aspects of research are connected to each other? and how it is connected to each other. So basically, uh, our uh, entire idea is of uh, research is that uh, we are coming up with a kind of an explanatory variable, so explanatory metaphors. And in the process, what is our entire focus is on that? How to do the analysis? How that? What kind of a process which we would like to follow in the process of analysis? Always remember that the analysis and explanations, these both are linked by the variable or linked by and another two levels of different set of aspects that is one is one is understanding. The second one is interpretation.
without understanding and interpretation, we cannot enter into the idea of analysis. If we are not able to enter into the idea of analysis and uh, explanations, what is expected out of our analysis is that explaining the relations between different set of variables, explain the relationship. Explaining the relationship or explaining the distribution, distribution slash pattern in the data. We were not able to arrive at, for instance, explaining the relationship between two variables or, or the distribution of values of the variables, how the patterns emerge uh, within, within the given set of our data. We were not able to get these explanations unless. We are thorough with the very idea of analysis. Okay, always remember that this understanding and interpretations guides the process of analysis. By doing analysis, what is expected is that we are expecting an explanation. This is what the general practice. This is what the general practice is. Okay, now what is understanding this? What is understanding? How we are supposed to understand the given set of data? Uh, primarily, you should keep it in mind that. Uh, what is understanding is that it's an ability, it's an ability of an individual to comprehend, to comprehend the object of the step. So the uh, researcher has a higher level of an ability to understand the object of the study or the kind of a, the given data set. So he would be able to understand it very clearly. Okay, uh, very good. What are the data set? What are the complex data set you want to do? Uh, uh, the researcher is able to direct a certain set of an understanding. There's a certain set of an understanding. Just understanding this, for instance, uh, how this process happens is that it's part of knowing. So the researcher has the ability to know certain inference, certain inferences from the data set. He will be able to take certain inferences from the data set. But how this process goes here is that it is connected by two things. One is it's a person, mind, it's an object of the study. of the study or the data set. So a kind of a connection between the person and the object of the study, mind and the data. This is how the process of understanding works. Okay. But in the process of understanding, what is exactly happens is that interpretation which happens. What is that interpretation which means? Interpretation which means you are trying to derive the means We are trying to derive a certain meanings from the data. This derivations of the meaning, always remember that the derivations of the meaning or the derivations of the inferences. Derivation of meaning or inference. Derivation of the meaning or the inferences happens through reasoning. You have certain reasons or the logical order, coherent logical order as well as the arguments. This arguments, the reasons and the arguments are, are largely connected to the theory which you have followed and the method. Okay. This is how the interpretation happens. So when you do the interpretation, the derivation of the meaning comes. The derivation of the meaning or the derivations of okay, the certain inferences, okay, that is what we call it as a representation. Representation. So what is analysis? Now the question is that what is analysis? Always remember that understanding and interpretations are part of the analysis process. 
once we do the analysis, we will exactly arrive at the explanations. Now the question is that, what is the analysis? I mean, what do we mean by the term analysis? The analysis is about simply like breaking or dismantling the complex data structure to a very small level of an understanding. Okay. What about the complex systems? What about the complex structure of the data is? Uh, it doesn't matter. But in the process of analysis, we are only trying to break the complex system. That means we are trying to divide each aspect or we are trying to understand the each variables in its own context. Okay. We are trying to understand each variable within its own context and trying to understand what is that variable and how the variables are playing a role uh, within the given situations and what, what kind of relations that exist between different set of variables that means the mixed sense. Okay, we are trying to understand. So when we do this process, we are exactly into the process of analysis. So what is the outcome of the analysis? What is the outcome of the analysis? The outcome of the analysis is three things. One is, it's a kind of an identification. Basically, it's an identification. Identification of three set of things we have. One is identification of the role of the variables. Yeah trying to understand the role of the variable. Here I'm writing. And how variables influence influence certain outcomes. And then you are trying to understand the next is analysis is about the relationship. What kind of a relationship which one variable has over the other variable. So basically we are trying to identify the rules of uh, the variable. So analysis is the process of trying to uh, like look at the line to divide or a kind of and trying to comprehend the complex data structure into a very very small levels of understanding. This would happen with the help of understanding that understanding is the ability of an individual to comprehend the object of the study or a given data set. It is about knowing the object, okay, as well as it is also a relation between the person, mind and the object of the study. Okay, this is how the understanding is. Basically, understanding is associated with to know or to explore. Okay, and then what is happening in the process of interpretation here? That is a, another word. The interpretation is, is nothing but a kind of a derivation of the meaning or derivation of an inferences. This derivation is nothing but a representation. The representation of what that data is exactly is all about. Okay, so when you do this process of representation, uh, exactly what you do here is that it's a kind of a reasoning, it's a, it's a kind of an argument which you make it out, and uh, this reasoning and argument are largely connected to the theory and the method you have followed in your study. Okay, uh, to which you enter into the idea of analysis. Okay, then the outcome of the analysis is the explanations of the variable. Uh, you are trying to uh, explain the variables or the relations and distributions pattern of uh, your data. Please keep all these aspects into the mind. It is not going to come uh, in, a, in a most kind of an, it is not going to come uh, immediately. Maybe like if you are able to learn this or understand it, slowly it will come within your uh, research practice. Okay. Uh, the, the idea is that uh, what, what is making me to explain this is that uh, in your project, you are uh, some of the projects, I would say that uh, in some of the projects, uh, students or uh, the certain groups actually they try to bring certain uh, diagrammatic representation, certain data. Okay, uh, but once they produce that, for instance, it's, it can be a bar chart, it can be a kind of an, uh, uh, the frequency polygon or anything which we are trying to project here. But I'm not able to get any set of inferences, any set of meaning out of that uh, uh, the table or kind of a bar chart. So that means uh, once I'm not able to infer anything, that means the data which I have, that's an invalid, right? The data becomes an invalid if a researcher is not able to derive any meanings 
again, that means there is no sense within it. You are not able to create a sense for your uh, data. So that eventually which will result in the invalidity. This is, you have to keep it in mind. So whenever you, you present a table or whenever you are trying to bring up with a kind of a chart or, or, or a kind of an, uh, uh, for instance, uh, you are trying to look at the mean, median mode of uh, your data. But it should be followed by uh, explanations, clear cut explanations. If you don't provide any explanations as as a kind of an reviewer, how I will be able to uh, like uh, derive certain certain understanding from your projects? So this is what the, the basic uh, question is. Okay. Uh, so keep all these aspects in your mind, and then slowly you do your analysis. The next is that uh, we will be after making you understand this. I will be moving on to the next level. But what is statistics? What is this? Statistics analysis is all about. So now uh, the idea is that uh, what is statistics? What is statistics? So it will help you to evaluate uh, how far that uh, 
you are, you are, you are, what are the scales you, you, you have tried to take it out? How far it is, it is, it is, it is projecting the data. It is projecting the data. Uh, how far it's, it provides a certain, certain meaning uh, for your data. So it helps you to construct that uh, tool, okay, uh, through which you are able to describe the relationship. This is what the primary sense is. And on the other hand, what, there are the descriptive data or the descriptive statistics is divided into uh, different different kinds of uh, descriptive statistics. One is, for instance, it's a graphs and frequency distribution. The second one is uh, measures of central tendency. And then measures of variation. of uh, range. So what is happening here is that uh, what is our focus? What is our focus? What is what is our need here is that uh, our need is primarily trying to look at the certain inferences from the socioeconomic data which we have, which we try to collect it from the field. So this is what for instance for for uh, for according to the project's need or uh, for according to the need of this particular course is that uh, uh, at the most uh, the maximum is that we can use it the graphs or either way graph or kind of uh, the frequency distributions or the, at the most the maximum of uh, uh, the measures of sound tendency. Okay. This is something which is I try to look at it for instance uh, you connect the socio-economic data and once you collect the socio-economic data, how far you are going to use the socio-economic data in coming up with your engineering, new setup for engineering ideas. This is what the objective is. This is what the objective is all about. Okay. Uh, suppose if, if you are eventually ending up with moving from, for instance, uh, descriptive to uh, inferential statistics. For instance, the inferential statistics, the very idea of the inferential statistics is that you are trying to infer you are trying to infer certain relations between the theory and the hypothesis. Theory hypothesis the relations you want to establish. So for instance, I am before uh, before going to the field, I might be having a we might be having a kind of a certain hypothesis in our mind. Okay, uh, whether I, we would like to check that uh, what are the hypothesis which we try to derive, whether it is eventually uh, able to observe from the field data. So I try we try to look at we try to test that uh, whatever we have here is it's present in the empirical data or not. So this. This is what the inferential uh, the statistics is all about. So when, once you do that, you are trying to establish a causal analogy. I would say that uh, this is possible within this project, but at the same time, uh, uh, if you are ending up with with the, with the uh, idea of inference using the inference statistics in your project, that means you are you are largely locating yourself in your uh, in the area of social science research. But the question for you is that how far that converting that social science data uh, into an engineering ideas, how far you are going to use those data into an engineering studies. This will be the question whether you use the descriptive or you use the inferential statistics, it doesn't matter. But as far as this course is concerned, as far as this uh, your project is concerned, I, we will be like giving more priority to evolving the engineering ideas, new set of engineering ideas. So how we are trying to evolve the new set of engineering ideas or have innovative practices, it's one way through the social economic development, understanding the culture, by understanding the social, economic, political and cultural aspects of our life we are trying to come up with this engineering ideas. In the sense, the question or our kind of the prime focus is that uh, uh, how this quantitative 
data helps each one of your groups or each one of you to arrive at the engineering problem or not. This will be the focus. For this particular focus, we are trying to look at the graph as well as the frequency distribution. I will be more focusing on graph and frequency distribution. Very simple. I would like to keep it. The measures of circularity. And uh, I would like to negate this, for instance, uh, not negating, I would like to keep this with the measures of radiation or inferential statistics aside in this course. Maybe like uh, I would like to do, uh, for instance, more lectures on uh, uh, measures of variations or for instance inference side outside of this course, but not within this course. Okay. So I just limit myself to this. Now the first is about the graph. Well, I would like to tell you three types of graphs. Are the main major three types which I would like to explain. One is the bar chart. The second is the histograms. The third one is uh, frequency point. So the first, the primary idea of what is this graph is? Uh, the graph which will help us to understand the how, how the distribution of uh, the distribution of values of variables. It helps us to understand how far the distribution of values of variables uh, uh, can is present within a given uh, data set. The data set is nothing but a kind of an, uh, uh, it has a kind of a numbers, numerical values, like a different set of numerical values are supposed to be the data set. Okay. Uh, now the question is that uh, what is the use, the very fundamental use of this uh, the graph? The fundamental very three measures of the graphs are the first one is that uh, it's a variability. Trying to understand the variability, skewness, and the third one is the second one. So the variability is how far the values are varies across the given graph or in the bar chart or so down to the frequency point again. Yeah. So you are trying to understand the, how far the varying values of the variable. The skewness is uh, something which is which is a kind of irregularity. Irregularity in a given data. The semi-tendency is about kind of an average. It's an average you are trying to take a kind of a neutral point and then the neutral point is a good point and you're trying to look at the uh, uh, comparing it with the highest with the lowest and the lowest with the highest uh, two different points. So the first is about what is this bar chart? Okay. Uh, in which context we use bar chart? Okay. The bar chart is specifically used for the qualitative qualitative data or variable. Which are not continuous, always remember that this is for discrete and finite in nature. Example I would like to give. Example I would like to give. For instance, uh, how many people are married and unmarried? Example of marriage. So you go to a village, we are trying to look at asking the uh, family how many people are 